Hello, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Hope you've uh, had a good 2022 so far. This is my first video of the year. Resurrected at uh, a, a project I started uh, last year in October. Um, so I thought I'd, I'd finish this off. So this is just an object found around the house. It's a Dove um, soap bottle like this. Um, so it's an interesting form, fairly simple um, visually with a little extruded section on the front for the label um, and then curving up the top here and a sort of quite a fluid sort of wrap form around the side. So I'm just going to roll through um, a few different iterations and just explain some um some of my learning along the way okay so i started by surveying the model and capturing main dimensions um just a note i'm not interested in the pump thing on the top just the main shape of the bottle okay so i've got a style spline that's um Sort of uh, constraining the front section where the label goes. Another style spline um, which controls the widest point, like the split line on the product, and then um, just an overall control polygon to control the size of things. And then I've created a sketch for the top, which is an arc, um, and then some other. Uh, sections down below here which actually I don't actually use this in the end because uh, instead of defining the bottom edge here I actually end up um, that is resultant because I make an overbuilt surface and then trim it back okay so I'm going on to model 2 so I'll just roll back through and explain a few things here right so I've created a side elevation for what I want the section to look like and then I've created a decided to create create the front as a sweep because the label area basically looks like an extrude uh, that then goes up into a um, quite a tight curvature transition at the top. So As you can see here, so I've got a line running into a style spline, degree three with four CVs. Um, and because they're uh, aligning to a line, I've just made the first um, three CVs collinear to this line, which means that's curvature continuous connection there. And I have a an angle dimension here to control the top. And a distance here, yeah, so you can move this point up and down. Um, and then my sweep cross section is an arc. Sorry, I'm a bit rusty. Uh, here in New Zealand, we we when it comes to summer holidays, the whole country basically goes on holiday for two to three weeks. Um, so unlike northern hemisphere where people stagger things so uh it takes me a little bit to warm up again so here i've created a sweep and that sweep is um normal to the right hand plane and wait to check that as you insert mirror right hand plane bodies to mirror i'm going to pick the sweep and then i'll knit these together and merge entities. Um, these entities merge because that's an extruded arc. And then I'll run a deviation check here. Okay, zero degrees deviation on the on the join between the surfaces there and zebra stripes. So you can see we've got a curvature continuous connection between the curved top and the extruded lower section. So that's all good. Okay, I'll carry on. So then I've 
converted entities out of my front control for the uh, boundary between the front surface and the side surface. I've just converted that entity into another sketch, which I then use to trim the sweep on the front, creating the teardrop surface. And then I've created some sections. So down here I've created a line, created a plane through there. That line is perpendicular to this line here. And then I've created a section. And again, created a plane here. Oops. Created a section through there. And one here. And then all my loft's fallen over. That's right, it's because I've swapped over to another file now. Why don't I just reload this? Okay. So I've created a loft, um, and then I've mirrored it, and I've knitted things together. So the lofts not like me to note, is it? It's forgotten. That's a neat, neat thing from SolidWorks, isn't it? It's forgotten all the references up here, um, yet it's rebuilding. Anyway, I'll explain why I didn't carry on using this um, this model when on to a new version. Mainly because um, the centre line um, and sort of getting some wobbles through here with my sections, even though the sections are fairly, they're, they're um, curvature continuous because they're tangent to the centre line and they're mirrored over. I decided to mirror over the uh, teardrop surface and then create this as a full surface rather than mirroring over. So I'm going to move over onto my version 3 now. Okay, the so version 3, um, the top's the same. I've created sections and my sections are now. Full, uh, full sections without mirroring the side surface here. So I've basically I've gone on, I've mirrored this body, the teardrop, and then I've started creating sections like so. So these sections are coincident or they pierce um, my split line curve. And it's an arc. So I've got several of these sections up the side. And again, they're arcs uh, piercing the, the part line line. And then the loft, is it going to remove my references this time? Yes, it is. Okay, so my profiles run longitudinally and then I have one, two, three guide curves um, and there's no tangent constraints or anything or normal profile constraints because I've done this in one go so I don't need to worry about what's going on down the middle to, to get tangency which means if I turn my zebra on I end up with a um, much smoother um, result with our undulations through here Okay, so on this version, I created an overbuilt surface on the bottom. And then trimmed it back. It ended up with a bit of funkiness going on here. So I thought, hey, one day, um, instead of building the surface here as a separate body, why don't I see if I can make it as part of this loft here that takes me into my version 4 where I have built the loft right through but because I did that I noticed that I had some wobbles and inconsistencies up here because the surface now is also taking into account what's going on down here rather than the previous version here where it's it's quite limited and this is added on um, and you can see the difference here if I go draft analysis um, 
front. This is my home cooked um, isophobe shader. So if you look there, the the curves are the the stripes are pretty consistent. But if I go through onto this one and have a look, deviation. Oh, oh that's not deviation. or draft. Eighty nine degrees. You can see what's going on there. The undulating viewing and thickness quite a lot here. Whereas they're much more regular doing this. So I decided uh, instead of building it in one piece right through, I'll go back to what I did before and build this overbuilt surface down here and trim it back, but I'll do it a different way. So my version five is here, and I basically decided to put a loft in down the bottom instead of a boundary surface. So here I am with this overbuilt surface again, and this loft just sort of it was less wibbly wobbly than the um than the boundary surface. Oh, you can you can spend more time on something like this and put in or cross sections or muck around try and get it smoother. But most of this is getting trimmed off, as you can see, it gets trimmed. And because that's that that trimming plane basically comes down to this uh, the tangent point of the surface where it touches. Once it's trimmed, you end up with two two bodies. Um, and then I've gone through and knitted everything together and mirrored it across, and then made the planar top and bottom surface and knitted those together, and then added some fillets. So that's a curvature continuous face fillet. You could do that as a cord fillet, so you don't get any um, any uh, rise here due to the undulation of the angle between the two faces. As you can see what's happening here, the fillet, the blend's much wider here and then narrower here as the angle deviates and it gets closer to being tangent. So if you wanted that to be the consistent width, you'd, um, you'd use the pipe trick, if you've seen that before, where you, where you sweep a pipe around and then trim back so that way the pipe being consistent width you end up with a consistent um, width blend or you can do it with a variable pipe sweep all depends on what you want and then that thickens and the results not too bad like that side surface and the front surface um, the transition's all good there you can see the curvature continuous transition down into the extruded surface well, it's swept, but it's basically extruded. Um, yeah, so my first video this year, a bit of a simple one. Um, hope, you, hope you guys find this useful. Um, if you do, please subscribe. And uh, thanks for watching. Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. See you.